ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Digital to Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Hello, it's Thursday night, and that was a not normal Charlie intro, and you're really confusing me. Uh, that was exactly the same intro I've done for two years, but thank you. I don't know, man. I think you're missing like a verb there or a noun or a syllable. Okay, whatever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, of course, am your host, Charlie. And I'm joined once again by the prolific commoner himself, Celius. It is a glorious day to be here on this wonderful Thursday night, or so I'm told. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, is a Thursday night hangout. It's a weekly live show where we try our best to cover the topics that are most important to you during the show. Uh, what if they're important to me? Huh? What if they're just only important to me? Then others should at least give their opinion. Okay, I like that attitude. Sir. If you haven't um, submitted your topic, question, whatever, have no fear. You can still drop it in the chat and we'll try to add it to our uh, topic list. If, unfortunately, we run out of time, your topic or question shall be added to the very next show. So have no fear. I never fear anything when I am on the show. And also, if you're watching this recorded or you're listening to this uh, recorded, do understand that you can reach out to us via social media and uh, ask questions or submit uh, topics and stuff. Just want to put that out there. It's not like this is the only time you could do stuff. Yes, yes, yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go into the first story, shall we? Isn't first... that why we're here? The first story, actually, the first two stories have to do with conventions. Actually, sorry, the first three stories has to do with conventions. Oh, that's a lot of stories about conventions, sir. All right, so let's start off with Gen Con. Uh, for those out there who don't know, Gen Con is the country's largest tabletop gaming convention. Uh, in the year 2019, it peaked at 70,000 attendees. That's now, a pretty good number. Yes. Uh Gen Con is usually scheduled uh, for early August. However, due to COVID, uh, last year, I believe it was, was there a hybrid part to it? I can't remember if it was actually hybrid or not. I thought but, there was. But anyways, um, uh, Gen Con will, they're going to try to do Gen Con September 16th through the 19th. It will be a hybrid event. Uh, there will be in person at the Indianapolis Convention Center in Indianapolis, Indiana. There will also be a live streaming element with content being broadcast worldwide. Additionally, local game stores around the world... Okay, that that sounds like an oxymoron to me. Local game stores around the world. They're local to Earth, man. <laughs> uh, they will be able to participate with uh, related pop-up events that will be happening in the, the hybrid experience. That's cool. Uh, they, they came out and said, based on the guidance from the CDC, recent announcements by the federal government, and the projections of public health experts, we believe there is significant cause for optimism for mid-September convention to be held with reduced attendance and some smart modifications. If that changes and the experts tell us we need to shift course, then the plan will change. Yay. If you... Um, if you donated or rolled over your 2020 badge, you have first dibs for uh, Gen Con 2021. Uh, once everyone, once everyone's been given the first dibs, who wants it, uh, it will be available to all. Uh, now, I did not get, I couldn't quickly find the the cap, but there is a very limited amount of tickets, and they may offer additional waves of badge availability based on. Uh, um, health and safety. Well, I mean, this is hopefully a good sign that, you know, other conventions that are coming up probably the late second half of the year, um, that we will be able to participate in conventions, even if in a bit of a more, you know, limited capacity, I am all for that. If it means that we can safely, um, participate and enjoy the nerdy festivities. And speaking of nerdy festivities uh, happening at the, the later end of the year, um, there is a convention that happens, or yeah, it happens every August in the beautiful city of Cologne, Germany. It's called Gamescom. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, last year was strictly virtual, but this year they're going to do hybrid. Um, of course, while they take safety precautions. Uh, there will be several digital elements for those who can't attend event in person for one reason or another. Uh, basically, I can't fly that far or I don't have that much money. Might sure. be a reason. Um, let's see here. Uh, there is including an online meeting point called Gamescom Now. Uh, the, the actual convention will be held in Cologne. They, okay, now here, this shows you that they want to make damn sure this convention happens. We have taken precautions to ensure those who do attend physically will be safe and protected. The entertainment area, for example, is being designed for a reduced amount of visitors and will focus on allowing visitors to test new games being demonstrated at the show with a digital queue management system to be used to control crowds. Other measures include hygiene and distancing rules and regulations on hygiene. Yep. Stand construction which have been developed in accordance with the provisions of the Corona Protection Ordinance of the State of the City and in close coordination with the authorities of Cologne. Uh, should the pandemic worsen to the point where it becomes impossible to safely hold an on-site event, the physical side will be canceled and it will go back to being strictly digital. Yep. I mean, it's all, you know, they're all starting to come up with kind of the plans um, to try to get it figured out. It's kind of what it sounds like. They're like, hey, let's do this and, and make it work. For those who are wondering when GamesCon is, it is, um, it starts August 25th. So what? it's the end of August. Gen yep. Con is mid-September. So I think that's probably the sweet spot you're looking at for kind of a, a potential hybrid situation. Now. I said I promised three conventions, so I shall give you one more convention. I lost count after zero. All right, so uh, so we talked about Gen Con, which is uh, the largest tabletop uh, convention, Gamescom, which is basically a humongous convention in Cologne. Now let's talk about Evo. For those out there who don't know, it's uh, Evo is the Evolution Championship Series. It's basically like the Super Bowl of fighting games where you have different, uh, you have a bunch of different uh, fighting games that you have profession, uh, esports professionals battling to the death in the game, not in real life. Though it would be cool. Well, is real life but a game. Ooh, so deep. Um, Anyways, so the big news about Evo, actually, let me, let me roll back real quick here. So some of you might remember that uh, there was an attempt to take Evo 2020 uh, digital but then it all went into the shitter. I do remember that. Uh, the reason, of course, was that uh, one of the um, co-founders and the former CEO uh, of the group that that owned Evo uh, was uh, basically in slam with allegations of sexual misconduct. And so they decided to just, no. At that point, you already have so much going against you. It's like, yeah. yeah. Now, of course, a lot of people are like, okay, well, you know, first of all, um, uh, the good news is that Evo has actually been purchased. Okay. Uh, it's been jointly purchased. Uh, it has been purchased by Sony Interactive Entertainment as well as... <clears throat> uh, RTS, which is a new esports organization, um, which uh, was formed by the sports marketing company Endeavor. So, um, Sony's vice president has come out and said, "Fighting games have been a vital part of PlayStation's legacy and our community since the very beginning, and we've been thrilled to partner with Evo over the years. This joint acquisition with RTS marks a new chapter of collaboration with Evo's co-founders Tom and Tony Cannon, and their passionate community of fighting game fans." So, they are, uh, I believe they are gonna go strictly digital with this one for this year. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be digital. Uh, so they're gonna, this is gonna be Evo Online uh, Take Two. It will happen 
uh, in August. There will be open tournaments for Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, Mortal Kombat 11, and Guilty Gear Strive. The competition will be broken up into regions with qualifiers in North America, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Entry is completely free. Now, here's the, here's the official statement from uh, the Canon brothers who uh, are, were, or, yeah, were the uh, owners of Evo until recently. <clears throat> Evo would not be possible with the collect, without the collective passion and collaboration of the fighting game community. And we're deeply grateful for your dedication over the past 25 years. Evo's been around for 25 years. That's crazy. We mm. know last year was challenging due to the pandemic and the circumstances mm. surrounding the cancellation of Evo Online involving a former team member who has been completely separated from our company. We want to reaffirm that harassment or abuse of any kind has no place within Evo or any of our future events. And we're taking every precaution to make sure members of the community will always be treated with respect, dignity, and decency you deserve. In order to deliver on the trust you have all put into Evo, we realize that we need an experienced strategic partner who truly respects the spirit of the fighting game championship. This is why we're excited to announce that Evo has become part of the joint partnership of Sony Interactive Entertainment and RTS. The new partnership is committed to bring, bringing amazing tournaments and competitive gaming experiences back to you this year and beyond. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for your continued support. You're welcome. So, I mean, I mean, that's a pretty no, no ambiguity statement. Yeah. I mean, it's very cut and dry. We cut the ties. We expect better. So... And I mean, to their credit, they did seem to try better. They didn't try to wishy-washy, like, you know, we'll try and maybe screw it up. Who's not? It seems like they went full on and, you know, extracted a terrible person from the community um, with still trying to go forward, um, hopefully with a even better experience. Well, I, I just I like the fact that that they were so dedicated that, yeah, they got rid of the guy that was causing the issues. But then they're like. To, to, so that this really, hopefully, doesn't happen again. We're putting the the power, we're you know we're we're putting the power of this in the hands of Sony Interactive, who has you know a a much more sophisticated marketing uh, uh, branch than these gentlemen have. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I never tune in to Evo, but I always somehow end up catching at least one of the like highlighted fights just because something crazy happens, like, you know, some crazy comfort behind victory where you think someone is, you, one player is definitely going to win it all. And then all of a sudden uh, a person pulls off like a, a perfect uh, 21 move combo to like obliterate his opponent. You Easy. turn the tables. <laughs> You got that under control, right? Huh? You, I know you can do that. Sure. If I'm playing the CPU on level zero, uh, uh, the, usually CPUs go from one to 10, 10 being the hardest. So yeah, level zero. I have full faith in you not to screw it up. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so that's cool. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I like talking about conventions. I like hearing that convention is going to happen in some... Um, in some form, you know, I still hope that I will be able to, con uh, attend conventions in person sooner than later, but, uh, I'll take what I can get. It's all we can do right now. Now, let us talk about some interesting news that, ha that, uh, Microsoft has come out with. And that is Xbox's auto HDR support is going to be headed to the PC. Uh, auto HDR support uh, HDR is a feature that Xbox Series X users have enjoyed since the console launched in November, but now it's going to it's like in a, a like a beta trial, and it's coming to uh, Windows Gaming. Uh, what this does is it it's it's set to give about a thousand games a boost to high dynamic range lighting and color, which basically means deeper contrast, richer richer color luminance, 
and a wider range of colors to a picture. Now, now do you need an HDR capable monitor in order to take advantage of this epicness? Correct. In order to, to get all this awesomeness, you will need an HDR enabled monitor. Uh, there are, uh, now after saying that there are natively rendered HDR games that are on the PC already, mm -hmm. but the auto HDR upgrades the visuals of games mastered in standard dynamic range with direct DirectX 11 or DirectX 12. Uh, it is currently uh, an available feature in the Windows Insider program. When it when it rolls out fully, PC gamers with the correct equipment can access the feature with a toggle in the Windows HD color settings page. See, man, you gotta get all the fancy stuff. Now, if anyone wants to hook me up with said fancy stuff, then sure, I will take it for a spin. But how much? How much does a um, an HDR, uh, let's see, HDR. Uh, I mean, you can get them for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, monitor. It's So monitors are like anything else. You could find some for like 300 bucks and mm -hmm. then they're like $800. Um, depending on both the size and the refresh, if they come with free sync, do they have the NVIDIA version? Um, and a big part of the monitor game is finding them on sale. Uh, basically, I would Isn't never- that the game of life though? I mean, like, so I have a 34 inch, 144 hertz free sync monitor that I waited about six months till it went on sale. Cause I knew like exactly what I wanted and I just put it on a watch list and then it went on sale. I'm like, boom. So that to me was the big part is doing the research of what checks all the boxes and then just add to a list of like slick deals or something of when it eventually goes on sale. Um, or okay, you that monitor is $2,600. <laughs> Yeah, I would uh, probably look at removing a checkbox or two in that case. Okay, let's see here. I love this. Uh, RA sold out. No price. No um, uh, no information about it. Oh, this one is 2200 Now we're going down. Jesus. Well, that's the trick is because you're already – so, like, here's one, for instance. So, like – I mean, this would be reputable because it's an Asus one. Hold mm -hmm. on. Thank you, Rose, for that. Um, so it's an HDR 144 at $500. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I don't know if it's actually been on sale. But, you know, give it time, it'll go on sale. But then there's another one right above that that's $350. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just looking around. Um, I don't know much about the mono price. Also has their own line of gaming monitors mm -hmm. that have some of those magic pixel filling checkboxes. Um, yeah, I've my problem with monitor price, like I like it for the cheap stuff, like mm -hmm. cables, like you know, for lack of better terms, are disposable, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to like my El Primo device, I'm like, I don't know if that's where I want to put my big time money. You know what I mean? Well, it's my uh, mono price is always the uh, um, cables for me. Yeah. It'll be no, for stuff. cables, because they're also not like move it. That's actually not a bad deal right there for that one. Mm. Um, I mean, it looks for HD for a 34 ish inch HDR 144 heart. Looks like you're looking at about four to $500 range. Yep. But like anything else, give it a year and. It'll be cheaper. Or it'll be the same. Well, the real well, the real question though is do you have the graphics card to drive it though? Because that's the problem. Because doing 4K gaming at 144 hertz with HDR, you need a beast of a card. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you saying that I can't just buy a really pretty powerful monitor? I've got my computer, I have to spend money. On my computer too. I mean, you could probably play Minesweeper in 144 hertz, or Excel, the game of finances. What was that? Oh god, what was the name of that game? Um, that was part of like the. Oh god, I'm gonna date myself, but uh, Windows 3.11 for groups, uh, for work groups. Uh, there was a game, Chips Challenge. Is that right? Oh yeah, no, that's a good game. 
Oh, let's play that in, uh, in high def, man. That was a classic, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, so if I needed to monitor those, there's some pretty decent choices. Um, but the problem right now would be buying a graphics card to be able to drive that. Um, Aha, there's the catch. With their current graphics card, are actually probably looking at if you're getting that true 144 hertz, which is basically your FPS, mm-hmm. you really have to run at just 1080p HD, not um, 4K or um, 1440, because you just can't drive it. Fine, ruin my dreams. I try. That's what I live here for. Why well, stop now, right? <laughs> So, I mean, that sounds really cool. I mean, if if only everyone in the world had, you know, already a monitor and hardware that could support it, that'd be, I mean, you know, it's kind of like I've got a, um, the hell do I have? I have an NVIDIA. Do I have an NVIDIA card? I think it's NVIDIA. Yeah. Uh, I've got an NVIDIA card and they have like the, the, uh, 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 uh nvidia like optimization thing that they've got select games that they can push it to the limit so here's the one i actually have i was actually wrong i have a 27 i thought it was 34 but mine's 27 that's what i have that's a seven that's a seven inch difference sir no yeah seven inch difference man I know how could you I not feel. tell i'm sorry so much lies well now i just have to buy one of those new monitors i linked to make up for my transgression Oh, you got to buy two. One for you, one for me. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Mr. This is this is what this is what happens when you lie, Zelius. Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, here's actually here's a real pretty one. Oh, wait. You could buy two you could actually buy two of these with your uh, new Biden check. Uh my new Biden check went to education, sir. Well, that's your problem. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, think of those two of those right next to each other in the ultimate gaming throne. Oh. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. It's pretty, man. Look at the little LEDs. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we talked about Microsoft. Now let's talk about Sony. Actually, let's go back to talking about Sony because we just went Sony, Microsoft, not Sony again. Um, for those out there who don't know, there is a game franchise that is a Sony, yeah, it's a PlayStation or Sony exclusive called Little Big Planet. Um, but it's been making news as of late because the Little Big Planet servers uh, got taken down after DDoS attack, which of course DDoS stands for Zelius. Distributed denial of service attack, meaning that you basically have a master hacker somewhere who wrote some script to basically take over many, 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 many computers, usually unbeknownst to the person, um, that then basically send a whole load of information to a central server to overload it. So uh, about a week ago, the little big planet server got knocked off uh, line because of this DDoS attack. It has since still not come up. And there is no sign of these servers being reinstated anytime soon. Uh, Little Big Planet started in two, uh, their first the first game in the series started in two thousand yeah yeah two thousand eight, uh, and then they they went. I think the last actual Little Big Planet was in twenty fourteen ish, but then uh, last year they made a game called Sackboy: A Big Adventure, which which is it was based in like the little big planet world, but not truly little big planet, which many people think is the reason why the attack happened. There are many out there who believe the attack was orchestrated by someone unhappy with Sony's direction and general treatment of the little, of little big planet franchise, though no other specifics are currently available. The DDoS attack affected community-made content in the Little Big Planet franchise, aside from the original game's version ported to the PS Vita, which, who the hell is going to try to go after the incarnation of anything on the Vita? 
The Vita? Like, really? Yeah. Hmm. So if you want to play a little big player, you can still do it on the Vita. It's very confusing. Indeed it is. But I mean, that's, I mean, little big player, that, that's the, the community, um, uh, made content. I mean, that's, that was the draw. You could build your own like planet level and Did add stuff. Right? And it, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Now, of course, when the second one came out, it was more of the same. And the third one came out, it's still more of the same. Um, it really wasn't like, it's not like they improved the level creator or something like that. But um, did you, ever, did you ever play them? Because I never played any of them. I had the first. I had the first two, and I really enjoyed them. Um, uh, I had a couple of friends who were really into creating the uh, the levels, so we kind of traded levels back and forth. That's cool. Yep. So that's. I understand that there are people out there who do not like uh, companies messing with what they believe is the perfect formula. But at the same time, the company is attempting to keep the franchise alive by trying to breathe new life into it from a different uh, perspective. Now, that being said, uh, since I'm not a huge diehard little big planet fan anymore, uh, I'm okay with saying that. However, that approach when it came to Dead Space 3 is total bullshit. Though I was, I would not have done a DDoS attack against the creators of Dead Space Three. It's good to know that you still uh, know exactly what you think. Look, it, can, I look. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I will tell you time and time again the shit that bothers me about certain games or things that they changed about certain games that I think ruined it. Uh, like but and you know you can you. You can listen to me over and over again if you want to, but it's not like I'm going to come attack the the company. That's not. That's not what. Uh, first I feel of all, like you're personally attacking me whenever you attack my game, sir. Look, first of all, when these type of decisions are made, it's out of the developers' hands. So attacking the developer is the most asinine thing you could do. It's the publishers. If you really want to go after someone, it's the publishers. So. Instead of going after the small companies that you know cre that actually created the game, um, you know, write some hateful letters to the publisher. Don't don't you know blow up their servers or something. Well, but... in that case, perhaps the developer should draw some cojones and stand up to the publisher. It's not my fault that they don't know how to stand up for themselves. This is America. Well, the, the publisher the... actually got bought out by Sony after Little Bl between I think it was right before Bit Little Big Planet Two. So it's an internal studio for Sony. Well, you're just killing all of my arguments, sir. It's not very nice of you. It's always good, it's always good to be educated about this stuff. I think your education is actually ignorance of what life is. Oh, now he's bringing in the heavy hammer. That's my uh, argument. You're over actually educated and you're making me feel less than I am. Okay. Well, let's let's hurt some more feelings, shall we, with the next story? Yay! I like hurting people's feelings. Nintendo has come out with an announcement that they will be removing some Mario games from the eStore coming at the end of March. Okay. Which I'm like, wait, Nintendo is removing Mario games, which is basically the bread and butter, basically how they got started. They're going to remove some Mario games. And I like, I, I had to read that like six or seven times. Cause I'm like, what the, f there's a reason. Okay. They there's are going to, um, they're going to remove super Mario 3d all-star collection from the e store. The reason is that this collection, uh, had, um, uh, uh, it, it it was a combination of three games. It was uh, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. It was released last year as part of the Super Mario Brothers 35-year anniversary. So it's a it was always supposed to be a limited-time collection. Now, of course, being that it is Mario, everyone's going, well, it'll be around forever. No, it will not be. So... If you ever wanted to have the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection, 
uh, for your Switch, you have until March 31st to purchase it. Once you've purchased it, you you can uh, uh, you can play the game after uh, March 31st. Even if you remove the game from your system, you'll still be able to download it anytime. Hmm, that's very confusing, but that's okay. Well, I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's there are definitely games and and whatnot that uh, on cell phones and on uh, PC that are no longer available for purchase, but since you already own the license that allows you to play the game, because that's what it is, if you want to get technical, thanks a lot, Bill Gates, um, then they're still going to give you access to it. Unless they're total asshats, which thankfully Nintendo isn't. Sony, I don't know if Sony would actually do that. Well, Nintendo can be assets too, so I give them all. Oh no, I, no believe me, I, I'm not saying that Nintendo never pisses off someone, but I mean, it's not like they're ta- it's not like uh, they're they're taking away the games that you already have. Ha ha! You can never see the game ever again. <laughs> so yeah, but. You know that actually kind of, I, that kind of makes me want to get that game because I've always seen it in the store, and I'm like, oh, I love Mario, and uh, I never beat. I'm gonna be honest with you, I never beat uh, Super Mario 64. Uh, I did beat Sunshine, and I did did beat Galaxy, so I did beat two of the three. But it probably looks super pretty on the the Switch. Hmm. Choices, I, choices. Choice. Anyways, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a pause real quick to do um, a little shout out to the uh, friends of the show. Uh, These are the people who have supported us in many, many different ways. So we just want to take a quick, brief moment and say thank you. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. They collectively journey to popular conferences as a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships in local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts to challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. For more information, go to http indiecluster.com. Hero Chiropractic is a unique healthcare practice set up by Ryan Moore, the company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They make that plan of action as convenient and affordable as possible, and most importantly, suited to your individual needs. For more information, go to www.herochiropractic.com. Neuberger Games is the game design imprint of award-winning RPG designer Craig Campbell. Craig has done a whole bunch of RPG design freelancing in the past. Several years ago, he dove into designing his own RPG. Now, Neuberger Games has multiple RPGs and is showing no signs of stopping. Neuberger Games endeavors to create games that explore corners of the RPG landscape that haven't been explored, or haven't been explored very often. These games forego dense gaming mechanics in favor of a lighter rule set that allow players to focus on telling fun, engaging, memorable stories. After yet another successful Kickstarter, their library has increased in size. Currently, the games that at least Zelius and I have played are Capers, Die Laughing, Merzen Acquisitions, and of course, the soon-to-be-played Good Strong Hands. For more information, go to www.nerdburgergames.com. Battle & Brew is Atlanta's first and oldest gaming bar and restaurant. Opened in 2005, Battle & Brew had a very modest menu, a few beer taps, and focused heavily on gaming. Now, they have grown to encompass so much more. They pioneered geek trivia in Atlanta and remain the hardest trivia in town. They have upgraded the menu from only a few items to all your bar favorites, and some soon-to-be favorites. They've expanded the gaming and kept everything top of the line. They've taken a good place and made it a great place. A place where the staff listens to your desires and suggestions. A place where you and your friends feel like you're at home. 
a place where everyone knows your game. For more information about Battle and Brew, go to www.battleandbrew.com. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that is the friends of the show. Now, of course, we have to give uh, some personal uh, Ultra Confusion shout-outs. So without further ado, let's just run down this line oh so fast. Ladies and gentlemen, Ultra Confusion will be taking part in Extra Life for the 10th year straight. Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best, gaming, to help sick and injured children at their chosen Children's Miracle Network Hospital. The money that we raise through Extra Life will be will go directly to our hospital, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, as unrestricted funds. This means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars you raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you have the ability to do so, please go to extra-life.org and search for Alter Confusion, and you can donate today. Now, that being said, if you want to join in on the awesomeness that is Extra Life, by all means, go to extra-life.org, and you can sign up today to be uh, your own uh, fundraiser, -er, or you can join the Alter Confusion team. Just give me a heads up. You can join the team. We have a team. Yes, we do. All right. So amazing. Indeed. All right. So uh, we. I'd also like to do some self promo for Alter Confusion. That is yes. Uh, Zelius is dressed nice, swanky. Thank you for pointing it out, Sam. I was going to get there eventually. I think. That was just for you, Sam. There you go. All right. So. Alter Confusion has a Patreon. Patreon Alter Confusion survives on the love and support of fans like you. And so we have a Patreon. Patreon allows you, the fans, to become active participants in the work we love through a monthly membership. This will give you exclusive access to content, community, and insight in our creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the stability we need to build an even stronger creative career. Currently, for our Patreon, we have only we have two levels. There's a one dollar a month level and there's a five dollar a month level. The one dollar a month level uh, would cost you twelve dollars a year, um, and that basically allows you early access to uh, the playthroughs and any of the polls that pop up on Patreon that uh, get sporadically posted. If you decide to go with the $5 a month, which would be $60 a year uh, option, not only do you get early access to the playthroughs that we post and the ability to partake in uh, polls that Ultra Confusion posts on Patreon, but you too will be added into the uh, thank you section of every single Thursday night hangout. So if you have the ability to do so, go to www.patreon.com slash alterconfusion and be a patron today. Uh, the money, and, and just so <clears throat> and, and just so that you know exactly where the money is going currently uh, for Patreon, it is uh, basically just sitting there and saving up so we could cover all the convention costs because, motherfucker, we're going back to conventions where we can. And... Good as much as I would love to say that we get to go to conventions for free, we don't. Uh, if it's not in Atlanta, we have to pay to what well, we will have to do hotels. And then some conventions require us to buy a pass. You got that. And then there's other, there's also conventions where you have to buy electricity and they give you some a astronomical like equation of, yeah, it, it's, you know, you're going to use a hundred dollars of power in two days. Um, so, you know, we're, we're just, we want to be able to do as many conventions as possible and this, uh, with Patreon, it helps us soften the blow to the Alter Confusion wallet, um, when doing so. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support us, uh, in, in other ways, maybe not, uh, financially, or perhaps you just don't want to do a monthly, um, donation you do have a you have the option of doing a one-time donation through paypal if you're on twitch.tv slash alter confusion it should be in the panel below the video there's a donate now button or if you're not watching this live or you're watching on facebook or youtube all you got to do is go to www.alteredconfusion.com uh, scroll about halfway down the page and there's this there's going to be a, a section bar that gives you the option of the it's in the same area as the Extra Life and the Patreon. There's a Donate Now button. Once again, that's a PayPal thing. It goes straight there, and then it's a one-time deal. 
uh, quick and easy. Now, if you want to send something physical to Alter Confusion, say uh, Funko Pops, which seems to be the uh, greatly... Uh, I've received a ton of Funko Pops, uh, which I am very happy about. And hopefully soon I'll be able to display what the collection looks like because I need to figure out the, the shelving situation. But that being said, if you want to send anything physical to Alter Confusion, be it a t-shirt, a mug, a hat, Funko Pops, anything of that nature, all you got to do is mail it to 1551 Dunway, that is D-U-N-W-O-O-D-Y, Village Parkway, number, this is super duper 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 duper, duper important, number, this is the P.O. Box number, number 88276. If you do not put number 88276, it goes to the post office proper, and then it will return to you, and we will never know it came. Uh, the city, once again, is Dunwoody, D-U-N-W-O-O-D-Y, Georgia. Zip code is 30338. All right. So let's get back into the news. There's uh, more news. But of course, there's always no more news, sir. Duh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the last story I have, um, th- I've got one more story, and then there was a question that was asked, uh, and I've got to see if I can find it. I, I apologize. I, I put it in a different document, but how'd you lose it? Uh, oops. No, go with the story. Okay. Anyways, the story, our fun, favorite, favorite, uh, streaming platform of choice, a Twitch, um, has actually for once potentially done something to that might help streamers. Uh, so they're, it, they unveiled a new tool for streamers dealing with DMCA strikes. So as you may have heard, there has been a shit ton of DMCA strikes and takedowns. Uh, they have ranged anything from uh, noticeable songs, uh, you know, you know, like popular artist songs appearing uh, either in the actual video game or playing in the background while someone's playing a video. Uh, but it, we've there's also been um, instances of individuals who uh, who claim ownership to random sound files that it's in a uh, a sound library for everyone and all. Um. So what's what's been happening is you've got a lot of people who've who've been trying to devise DMCA safe content. Um, mm-hmm. there, there is, there is a Twitch, uh, safe content, uh, music list that you can use. Uh, you could also attempt to utilize the one in Spotify and hopefully no one, none of the songs there have someone going, you know what? Nah, that's mine. But that being said, so what this tool is going to allow is it's going to allow you to be to much easier tra- keep track of any of the copyright strikes made against you. Uh, you'll receive a message through the on-site inbox. Uh, on top of that, you can also you will then gain the ability to uh, unpublish or delete videos from your channel on Moss. So you don't have to do it, you know, one at a time. You could do it one at a time or you could do it in batches of 20. So I guess if you're trying to delete your entire channel and it's got more than 20 videos, you're gonna have to take a couple goes at it, but still, being able to delete 20 at a time. Hmm? How long would that take us to delete all of our videos? I freaking don't know. Now this is Twitch. I don't know how many of the twi- our Twitch videos actually stick around because we don't save them. Ah, uh, right. Uh, the only ones that stick around are the, the highlights and there's not a lot of, there might be 20 highlights. But anyways, but they're the best highlights. I like to think so. Um, but uh, Twitch is, has also um, made plans that will uh, give the option for users to delete clips of their channel, uh, sort by view count, game, or date, which I think that should have already been there just to the, uh, the ability to quickly sort on how many viewers I had you know, what's, what's been my most popular, the, the most popular stream I've ever done. Um, 
perhaps I played one weird ass game and I can't remember what it is, or I'm trying to see how many times I played a certain game, or if I'm looking for, uh, you know, the, the earliest stream that saved, or maybe the latest, or maybe I'm looking for one that happened on you know, a specific date. <clears throat> Sam, if y'all start singing a big song, does that count? Or is it only played music? Ooh. So, What, karaoke -ing? Okay, you bring that up. So let's, let's, um, let's talk about this. There are uh, rhythm games like uh, DJ Sim Fuser, for example, or Rock Band or something like that. They cannot be played. Uh, mm. Those games do not, will not be able to be streamed. Well, that goes my music career. Um, yeah. Uh, technically, you should, well, shit. It's a little bit of a gray area, Sam, because technically... If you're singing someone's song that's not yours, you shouldn't be able to make money off of it. But uh, what if it's your own reimagining of that original song? That's why you need a um, appeal system uh, because of all the freaking copyright law. If you can say that you know you made it your own, or 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 it's your own artistic interpretation, or it's a parody of this uh song or something but you it's a back and forth it's not you know it's not like i could post a disclaimer before going by the way this i know that i am not the original singer what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to show you my artistic view of this song it's not going to work that way it's not is it everything just an artistic view of what already exists sure That's all if I you want to go that route isn't everything uh uh derivative of the first thought and so aren't exactly. we just copywriting or aren't we just you know uh, copyright infringing every single time we open our mouth so what you're saying is we should give everything back to god basically hey good job you just made the argument for that haha -ha. oh see now we're back in philosophy class thanks zilius thanks thanks for for making me have to think all that nonsense I know that's what we're here for, and I haven't really had that much to drink. Impressive. Um, I'm, I'm going to see if I could try to pull up this freaking. Uh... Oh, damn it! Where the hell did it go? I'm, I'm trying to see if I could find that story that uh, or. So there is something called NFT. I think it's what it's called. Non fungible tokens or some crap like that. Mm. Yeah. Non-fungible tokens, or NFTSs, are pieces of digital content linked to the blockchain. The digital database underpinning cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Unlike U NFTSs, those assets are fungible, meaning they can be replaced or exchanged with another identical one of the same value, much like a dollar bill. So basically, this is like a digital trading card. And apparently everybody and their freaking mother is starting to get into it. And I don't know, I really don't know what the hell that is. Because like Square Enix is now in on the game. There's some uh, football players that have made NFTs. Like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Well, Square Enix also had their announcement day today. Yes. Did, did you see what they announced? I saw there was an announcement, but I did not. So, Zelius, tell me what was announced. So, they announced some uh, things about Life is Strange. Um, so, they have a new one coming out, and they also have some remasters. Mm -hmm. um, the game that they announced last year, Project Athea, now has the official name for Spoken. Um, it's an interesting-looking game. It's... When you first start watching the trailer, if you do, it looks pretty not that exciting. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, you see the main character start to like zip around, like have these like crazy skills, like zooming around the actual like map, mm -hmm. um, and then some crazy abilities. So I think that could be interesting. Um, 
the uh, Outriders, which is being released. Um, I actually played the demo of Outriders on a couple of the different characters because I was actually originally planning on buying it because I saw the demo. I saw like, you know, the preview video for it. I was like, oh, this looks like a good, you know, shooter. I played the demo. It just wasn't fun. Like, Destiny, like, I know it didn't keep my attention forever, but why I played it, like, I enjoyed the game. Borderlands, it's fun to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just found Outriders more tedious than anything else when I played it. So I'm now like, eh, maybe I'm not buying it, actually, because it actually is not, I think, released until, like, April 1st, maybe. Um, so that was, like, a little bit like, okay, then. Um, oh, another I, game. I, I'm, I'm all in. Well, shoot. Well, yeah, I'm all in for the Tomb Raider uh, Definitive Survivor Trilogy. So I'm trying to figure out what is the deal between, because you can already buy basically the trilogy on sale. So what's the difference between the Definitive Survivor Trilogy and just buying the three games is what I'm trying to figure out. Because I saw that. I'm like, is there actually a difference? Um, I don't know. Um. And then you have more characters in Marvel's Avengers, which everybody hates. The actual game itself. Yeah, I feel like we we talked about it and how they're like, oh yeah, we're going to uh, give you an XP boost, but we're also going to boost the amount of XP you need to for levels. Yeah. You know where? Mm. Okay, so I guess here's the difference. So with the trilogy series it's available right now mm -hmm. um as the release on xbox and playstation i don't see it about pc i don't know um for twenty dollars until april 2nd and then it goes up to fifty dollars i bet you the 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 xbox is actually microsoft store mm. yeah it probably that. means that it's you know uh pc and xbox yeah but it, so it's guess, great I games guess, they're yeah. absolutely phenomenal games I only played the first one, so I may actually have to buy the buy this because I was eventually playing and playing the second and third game. Yeah. Um, but again, it kind of goes down to graphics because, like, when I was reading about it earlier, the comments like, "Well, is it remastered for the PS5 or Xbox Series X?" It like to be the original Tomb Raider, even though it's 2013. I honestly don't know if I know the difference. Honestly, notice the difference between the 2013 and a remaster. Right. Like, if they're side by side, sure, I get it. Like. Maybe I'd notice, but if you just sit me down at the original 2013, it's still so beautiful looking. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess there came like a certain point in 3D graphics that I think age really well, where remasters are great, but are they really necessary at a certain point? I know there's people who say yes, but for the most part, I'm like, I don't know if remastering Tomb Raider is really the best use of resources, to be honest. I don't know. Ooh. Uh, here's something. Uh, so you know how uh, <laughs> Battlefield 1 is currently in 1999? But that's only one game. We're talking about three games. But think how much gameplay you can get out of a multiplayer game like Battlefield 1. Yeah. Wait, I thought there were like eight battlefields out. Why is it battlefield? Well, it's one? battlefield, battlefield one, battlefield remastered, battlefields, battlefield the next generation. I'm just kidding. I don't know what the names are, but. <clears throat> so what's the issue? Battlefield one. I don't understand. Uh, I I do want to point something out. Uh, we in a previous episode we were talking about um how the game Terraria, uh, was not going to. Uh, was not going to end up on the Google Stadia because uh, the the developers, all their Google accounts got locked out. And then uh, Google never came to help them. Well, it turns out that the game is now on the Stadia. Uh, they apparently had some, some behind-the-scenes... Uh, gaming and it will be uh ported to the stadia how exciting um yeah i'm like huh well okay i mean okay like yeah of course must have been a pretty paycheck 
But there you go. You got to remember that uh, Stadia did, uh, or Google Stadia did close their internal gaming studio. So they need all the third party titles they can get. Uh, Sam says, My office IT nerd turned me on to Battlefield 1942 and 2000. I'm forever indebted to him. So is Battlefield 1 like a newer game than Battlefield 1942? Yeah. That's what I don't understand. Like, yes. I need like a scope of sequence as far as the different iterations of Battlefield, I guess. Hold on. I'm Googling it, yes. I got it. Battlefield release order. So apparently, Battlefield 1942, Vietnam, uh -huh. Battlefield 2, uh -huh. Battlefield 2142, uh -huh. Battlefield Bad Company, yep. Battlefield 1943. Uh, oh, yeah, go, yep, keep going, yep. Um, let's hear. Battlefield Bad Company 2. Uh -huh. Battlefield 3, uh -huh. Battlefield 4, uh -huh. Battlefield Hardline, yep. Battlefield 1. Yep. So now we're going backwards in time. But, but. Then Battlefield 5. Uh -huh. And then Battlefield 5, Tides of War, Chapter 6, Into the Jungle. How long can we make a video game title? Yeah. Good Lord. That's a lot of Battlefields, man. Yes. Yes, it is a lot of Battlefields. And I'm sure that... Sam owns all, what is that? Okay, the main ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13. 10, 11, 11 of them. Actually, I, I, that's an interesting question. Zelius, do you, have you ever owned an entire franchise of a civilization? Video? You, you, you've owned every single civilization? Yes. I'm trying to think if I have. It's the only series I can say that for. Tech, I guess technically, I did own all three Lords of the Realms, but oh. I wanted to shit in the third box. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I have oh, let's see. Hey, actually, wait. I own all but one Swickedin. Fuck. You will never let yourself live that down. Nope, never. I own all the dead cell, uh, dead spaces. I also own the anime, so booyah. I don't know. That that's that's actually a question that I'll have to I'm gonna have to think about it after. Because I'm not. I'm sure that I have a lot of them, but I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Too many years of gaming, sir. Too many years of gaming. I can't keep all of my libraries straight. And I like my game. Like, I don't remember buying this game. Like, Titan Quest Anniversary Edition. Like, zero hours played. I remember playing the original Titan Quest. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, was I given, like, a new version because I owned the original? Maybe. So I've had I that happen a couple times with some of the... Uh, I think it's uh, at least one of the uh, the Kickstarter games. Um, but yeah, let's see. It was a good game. Well, technically, I now have all the Borderlands. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, I've only played one and two, so actually Borderlands 3, if I get it, well. But, you also do, but do you count uh, Tales from the Borderlands in that? Oh, no, but if you do, you've played it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Now, now we're getting like semantics. Do we count spinoffs if it's still in the same universe? So basically, if do you own every single game that Riot Games has made? Because that would then cover the League of Legends. I definitely don't. I well, I don't. I don't either. I'm just saying because I mean, you know League they're always adding a new version of League of Legends in a different form. League of Legends definitely wouldn't have played by them. Yeah. Okay, this is interesting. I apparently own all the Five Nights at Freddy's, yet I've never played any of them. I probably should be ashamed. Huh. And I also own a bunch of the Grand Theft Autos. Huh. Apparently, it, there's a spin-off RPG called Ruin King coming to consoles. From who? 
Riot Games. It's a spin-off RPG. Yep. And then they also have the uh, MMO coming. Yeah, I knew about the MMO. Um, that's been in a while. That's usually, I see that one on the uh, MMO, like, YouTube videos I follow. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another one I've seen that looks actually really interesting. I can't remember what it's called. But it's basically, it's a very MOBA-inspired RPG. Um, it looks really cool. Hmm. It's one you'd probably enjoy. Um, but it's one of those where it's been like, they released this year as an MMO for like the last three years. So who knows what will actually be released. Oh, StarCraft Ghost. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, that would actually be kind of funny if they put out those videos just to like screw with people. Oh, like the StarCraft Ghost. And then what was the name of that? The Uber system uh the phantom that was gonna revolutionize pc and console by making it one so ruin king is scheduled to launch on pc nintendo switch ps4 xbox one and pc everything sweet well because i mean i see that a lot there were games you would think could be released on every device and they're not like either the switch is left out or the pc is left out or like something is left out you're like there's a couple of reasons for that. One could be a contract. Two, it could be the simple fact that the developer does not have a um, uh, a dev kit for that specific um, system. Though, there, though, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, console or platform owners are trying to find a lower bar of entry to allow for more developers to put their stuff on different systems. Well, the two big ones I'd say right now. One is um, I always butcher the pronunciation, but Genshin Impact for the yep. Switch. Yep. And the other one would be for the consoles is, um, oh my gosh, I have a total brain fart. Um, Fantasy Star Online. Because mm-hmm. that, I mean, PSO is years old. It really is just a matter of, honestly, localization. Yep. Like, it already exists, like, in Asia. They used to bring it stateside. So... And that's a fun game. But apparently there's a new version of Fantasy Star Online that's not a new version. It's like run in parallel with updated graphics. But it's a different game, but not a different game. So it's, it's like it's like person. vanilla. Uh, it's no, kinda... it's still, you could still play with people in the vanilla PSO2 world. You're just also in a parallel different world. Okay, Is my head like, hurts oh, now. It's, like it's, sep- it's separate, but not. I don't know. It's, it was really odd sounding. I definitely want to try it out because I had fun playing PSO2 on the PC. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Well, who knows? <clears throat> All right, ladies and gents, I think we've um, we've reached the end of <coughs> the end of the show. Um, I wish I could. I personally wish I could go longer, but. Um, Oh man, I'm getting like the worst case of cotton mouth. So, and I'm don't all, die, sir. I'm trying not to. Okay. So, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to take this time to thank everyone for tuning in to the Ultra Confusion Thursday night hangout. For myself, Charlie, and Zealus, it's been a pleasure giving you everything to come our heads, our mouths, and of course, our hearts. We'll be back next Thursday for another Ultra Confusion Thursday night hangout. Remember, kids, keep on gaming in the free world. Amen to that, brother. <laughs>